Well, hi girls and boys. Here's a quick tutorial today that came out of necessity. Uh, oh, so much has happened in the last uh, couple of days. Uh, I should start out, coincidentally, my friend Rick Cutter, look for his YouTube channel. Rick is uh, a man of talent. Talent, knowledge, and wisdom, and uh, he knows, uh, Rick knows what he's doing when it comes to radio stuff. He's built some very fine equipment, and he's got some nice stuff up here on YouTube. So, uh, go look for Rick Cutter, and look at some of the stuff he's built. I was talking to him recently, and he says he's been getting some in inquiries about uh, some Balan use usage that... Uh, I guess some of his uh, associates have been uh, curious about or wondering, you know, what the heck are the Balans and Unknowns doing out there? So Rick's addressed that issue on his site, uh, on his YouTube thing. Um, this has been going on for a long time with me, too. Uh, I was never really in the business of building these. I have built a lot of them for people who don't want to or can't. Uh, I do it at cost, literally at cost. Uh, I prefer that uh, hobbyists try to uh, brew their own. But anyhow, uh, there's been a lot of questions on some of the misunderstandings in the usage and application of uh, balance and unknowns. And just you know, let's, let's just call them RF transformers. Um, if you're familiar with this uh, thing from the uh, somewhere here on YouTube, it's a it's an all band pre selector, and uh, it's got a lot of nice features. Uh, that uh, let's hear if you want to take a look at it. I don't want to dwell on it too long. It's preamp and uh, impedance matching and overload control and antenna selection and all that. And there is a typical transformer. It's a, a type uh, 43 ferrite toroid, and it's wound to give essentially these matches. There we go. Uh, for a 50 ohm, 52 ohm receiver input, which they never are, by the way. All right, let's clarify that. If you're transmitting, and I played around with this in my pre selectors before, uh, for antenna matching, I've used LC. Uh, combinations of T networks, Pi networks, L networks, uh, reverse L networks, um, and that's fine, uh, but it's more applicable to uh, transmitting. Now, if you're using, uh, oh, you start with QRP at 5 watts and you go out to legal limit at 1500, you want to get all those watts, we're talking watts, out into the air. Uh, receiving, you're just pulling in microvolts. Obviously, you want the system efficient, but uh, you, you want it you want it efficient to the point where uh, you're going to be doing the best you can on signal to noise ratio, and not really worried about how much fire is in the wire. Uh, and I say that because there seems to be that. Uh, Urban legend, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a street legend that says, "Oh well, you know, my antenna picks up this signal louder." Yeah, well, that's fine. But what's the signal to noise ratio with transformers and with balance? And here's here's the balance. Here's one that's going to go into a probably a weatherproof box or something. I don't know uh, exactly where this particular one's going to end up. Um, they reduce common mode noise, and uh, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. You can uh, you can find that stuff and learn about common mo mode noise on your coax and your transmission line and all that. But it's something to learn um, because that's what the transformer is going to do for you, isolating the feed line from the actual radio. Um, I just want to go quickly through what I did here for you receiving guys, because again. We're dealing with microvolts, sometimes less than a microvolt, sometimes 20 or 50 microvolts. Um, I wound this balance in here 
I'm calling them Balums. You guys can call them Ununs and Transformers, whatever you want. I like to call mine Louie. What was that? I wound Louie here to correspond. Let's see when you get a good look at this graph. I started over here way down in BLF because I like to play down there with the loafer bands uh, between 20 and 10 and 20 kilohertz and roughly out to about 30 megs. And uh, here's the various taps on this thing. Uh, if you want to try to hold that so you can study it. All right. And the, um, the uh, associated or the resultant impedance starting here at 50 ohms and getting up here around 200 ohms. <coughs> Excuse me. Try to remember you're receiving in a mismatch of 2 to 1 or 5 to 1 ain't gonna hurt you. You have AGC circuits in your radio that sees a lower signal and it's going to boost them. It works like audio compression or expansion. The receiver knows what it wants to be fed and it will make internal adjustments for you. If you don't believe me and you have a receiver where you can turn the AGC off and ride the RF gain control, do that and get familiar with what little signals and big signals sound like when you bypass the AGC, or at least you know what the AGC is doing in the radio. <coughs> Choking on my clock. By the way, uh, Brazilian brown gold beans. Oh man, it's so good, but I think I burnt my throat. <sighs> but at least it keeps you going. Anyhow, these are the curves you got. What I did, basically, uh, I'll show you the charts here. Uh, the design uh, impedances that we wanted in ohms. And the actual that I measured today, close enough, guys. Really, really close enough. Close as I would care to uh, or hope for. And the actual ratios, these represent to the 50 ohm uh, feed in the uh, you know to feed your receiver we're up here at 20 or 30 ohms that's a 0.5 to 1 half to 1 because you want to be over here at 50 ohms 1 to 1 is 50 that would be if we could focus over here see the 25 50 those are standard feed line it'd be 150 300 600 ohm balance line, 1200 ohms if you're running uh, in fed. <coughs> Damn, I need uh, need a cough drop. Uh, anyhow, it, it works out to be one to one, two to one, three, six, and eight to one, or however you want to do it. What I did to build these things, build it and start winding. Uh, I think there's about 25 or 28 turns on the primary. What I did is I started, let me find the point here. I started here with the blue. These, these are all color coded so I know how to wire it. Black, brown, red, you know, the retina color all the way up to blue. Start winding, wind all the way around and stop when you fill up the core. Just fill it up and stop. Then go in and make a secondary winding every third turn. So you essentially have 3 to 1 in winding ratio or a 9 to 1 in impedance ratio. Remember the square, the square law. That's a good place to start. Then take something sharp. See sharp? And put it on your... LCR meter and starting with the start winding start uh, the wire to the start of the winding start going around and piercing the insulation of these until you find spots that you want to tap I found a spot here I scraped the insulation away and I soldered a tap Boop. That's how I do it. And 
actually, uh, forgetting the actual numbers here, the actual impedance numbers, 90, 180, well, 150 ohm line, 300 ohm line, 450 line, forgetting that, just go by halves or doubles, however you want to do it. So whatever the full winding turns out to be, I'm about 400 microhenries here. Just start cutting it in half and do it in increments all the way around. Go 400, 200, 100. You're going to be close enough for receiving, guys. I'm telling you. Uh, you don't need that one-to-one. -one. You're not working QRP, and you're going to be worried about, instead of 5 watts, putting out 2 watts onto the antenna. Just, if it's a receive only, just do it this way. Common mode noise is going to go away. Uh, I proved that over and over again. I actually built a generator out there <coughs> that was giving me, I had two of them. One was a DC brush motor generating all kinds of hash, and the other one was a a little spark generator uh, made from a, a piezo, uh, you know, those piezo clicker things. Uh, with and without a ballon, and the noise either shows up or it doesn't. It, it's, it's, if it's not down 60 or 80 dB, it's not down at all. You did something wrong. So, there you go. Receive only. <coughs> Use a ballon. Ah. <coughs> uh. Now the coffee irritation's turned into sneezing. I don't know what the hell. Hope it's not the COVID. Just kidding. All right, there you go. Uh, thanks again to Rick. And I talked to Rick about doing this uh, quick and dirty thing here. If I went too fast, just go back and look at it again. Take a look. Print yourself out some charts or something and, and play around with the numbers. Uh, I'll give you a good example before I go. My 80 meter dipole is tuned to thir around 3,800 kilohertz. Uh, and that's fine when I'm transmitting 200 watts or 500 watts on 3,800. If I tune off that, you know, but who's there all the time? So I'm going to tune off and I'm going to go to 30, uh, 3825, 3890, uh, 3925, where we have our nets. Uh, it's going to be off. The impedance ain't going to be uh, 50 ohms anymore. So what do we do? We invoke a tuner. Well, for you receiving guys, that's what you're doing here. A lot simpler than using LC, Pi, T, and uh, uh, whatever other configurations you want to do, L and reverse L. Uh, just something like this. And you're going to get in the ballpark. Like I said, if you're in within 400%, <laughs> you're doing good. And believe me, receivers are not 50 ohms input. They're close, but they're all over the place too. So approach it with a little bit of, uh, you know, constraint in mind. You're never going to match the numbers perfectly, ever. And the minute you touch the tuning dial and you go off frequency, you start all over again because outside at the feed point, everything's all different. All right, guys. Um, that's it. Again, went real long. Bob, N1KPR, dub, 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 bobsamerica.com, YouTube. Say say you like me or uh, if you don't like me, just, I don't know, go look at uh, something more interesting. Have a good day. Stay COVID-free. Bye-bye. Love you all.